Hello, hello. Hey guys, what's up? How are y'all doing today? Good. How you doing? Doing good. Yeah. I'm yeah. really excited about our Halloween super special. Tell me all about it. Well, it is like the ultimate treat, and it's because we love you guys. I'm just throwing that out there. Wait a minute, I messed it up. I messed it up. I should have said, How excited are you? I am super excited. <laughs> Jared's as excited as he's ever been. So excited. <laughs> no tricks, all treats. Unable to contain himself. I'm so right. excited. Oh God. Uh, right. sorry, uh, a I don't know why I did that. Anyway, hello. Right. Uh so, so tell us tell guys, us all about the Halloween thing. You guys have one more day to get the Ruby slippers. Except we're extending this entire next week until Halloween. We're giving free shipping and 10% off on everything on our site. That's okay, just madness. Who approved to such a thing? That's incredible. <gasps> Who would do that? Did I, did I not ask for approval on that? I believe I've hit my head. <laughs> <laughs> so for one week only, one week only, you guys, 10% site-wide. Free shipping, site-wide. Hit us up. And you're welcome. Because Ryland's <clears throat> awesome. And we love you. So yeah, so that's, just, that's just, what's special this week. Those five or six extra followers we gained last week. We just completely <laughs> alienated them. They're like, oh, this is so nonsensical. These people are fools. <laughs> I'm out. This is what I liked. Yeah. Mm. These crazy people. Mm. Anyway, what do you guys want to talk about? Are we going to talk about anything work-related? Or are we just going to talk about dumb stuff? We should talk about dumb stuff. Some work related. You want to do any product updates, Jared? Uh, yeah, we got a couple. Uh, Mr. DNA, he's uh, he's coming right along. Let's we, pretend uh, we want to stay in business. Let, let's let's work on that. Yeah. So yeah, Mr. DNA, he's coming along. We've we are um, just finalizing the packaging art on it, but uh, the figure itself is well in production. We are looking at getting him out of our supplier by like mid next month. So mid November, we really want to get him in by Christmas for you all. So that's our goal to get this in our warehouse for the holidays. It might come in red hot at the last minute, but we definitely want to get it in before, uh, before the holidays hit us. So it's going to come in just, just in time to inconvenience me on the customer. <laughs> that's what it's going to do. Or I got to come in for you like the day before Christmas. Were you planning on, on a vacation? Were you planning on heading out of town? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Tom said I couldn't for like six more years. Oh, well. Remember that? I'm not yeah. allowed to break. That's not fair. Nah. I think you can just. I think you just leave. Like, no, it just keeps me chained to the radiator in the office that he doesn't allow me to heat the office with. He gives it's you very one. Does he give you one piece of coal. Again, oh. very, very Dickensian. He's, <laughs> you know, I don't dare ask for for any kind of warmth or support. Oh, Anyways. what else we got? Oh, the Hunter Seeker from Dune is, yeah, that should be clearing any day now and on its way well before the holidays. So that's another holiday item to keep an eye out. That God, one will be coming in before. That thing forever. What's that? I feel like we've talked about that piece forever. Yeah, and we really almost, have. we're almost there. We're almost done. Just so everybody knows, I mean, if, if if you've watched all these videos, thanks, uh, and, and you know what I'm talking about, but if you haven't, which you probably haven't, um, this will be fresh. So on, on the Hunter Seeker, we love that thing. Um, Sean will pop some pictures up, I'm sure. Um, but we went, that that thing went through, man, it's it's been like three different factories. And, and who knows how many passes. Uh, the factory we, we really wanted to use on it, the one that was trying the hardest, we were truly trying to give them a chance. I think I have at least 13 passes. No exaggeration. Remember when I showed that whole bank of hunter seekers once? It was the drawer. You had a drawer. Yes. You, you put them all in. <laughs> yeah, each one of those was a, I got it right this time, guys. It was, yeah. oh, this is exactly what you want. And then we wait two weeks for it to come in and we're like, ah, shit, this isn't what we wanted. And, and, and then, then it, the cycle, it was so groundhog day. We lived that for over a year, just one pass after another. Finally, before 
we got enough sense to just move the project to another factory. And then we did that a little bit again. And then finally it found its home where it should have been all along and they did a great job. And uh, that's what we've been waiting on now. So the only alternative was, I mean, we could have released it subpar. I mean, we, we could have done a, a B minus effort, you know, over a year and a half ago, but that's no way to win anybody over. So we decided to stall it a little bit till it could be right. And um, yeah, that's what it finally is. So those are coming. We think everybody's going to love those. If you love 84 Dune, you're going to love this piece. And yep. uh, the, uh, the, we'll mention the, the Chris Knife too, the, the 84 uh, Chris Knife. Uh, yeah, Chris Knife, we just got that deco sample in. Uh, a few revisions we want to kind of dial in there with our supplier. Um, so we'll have a little bit more round of, or a few more rounds of back and forth, but we we are confident that should be resolved by year's end. That is not one I want to promise by Christmas, unfortunately. I just yeah. don't want to, I don't want to overpromise and under deliver on that. Um, you never know, they might get it right and we might sail right in, but. Um, it's possible. See. Yeah, but, it's possible. But not likely. Yeah, don't, I don't want to promise it for sure. You know what, we, we could go ahead and say what the delay was on that. I mean, we we were mousy with it for a while and kind of just skimming around. So what we wanted to do with that, guys, uh, the piece you see on the um, on the website and the piece that Sean is undoubtedly showing right now, um, that is a uh, chromed. Uh, it, it's, it's a chromed finish, a, 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 a cap, if you will, plasticky cap that was on the end of those. And uh, we didn't want to just do a chrome-esque finish on the resin. I didn't want to cap it with something that was chromed and a little shinier. Uh, so the goal was always to get metal on there. Let that end cap be metal. Let the uh, the ring on the, the the sheath be metal, the bottom tip. You know, that, that that's clearly what they were going for in the film, the illusion that those pieces were metal. So uh, we wanted to realize them, you know, in the real world that way. Um, but man, that ended up being a little bit of a challenge, right? I mean, yeah. It, it took it definitely took extra time because there's there's always time in in tooling up uh, yeah and tooling up for a metal injection piece which this is right um, it takes about the same amount of time to cut steel what we call it and when you're when you're doing a mold injection in china your the mold is actually a block of metal and they're carving the negative shape into that block of metal and it's usually two pieces it can be three pieces even more so it's a complex engineering challenge to uh, do injection metal like that. And that's what we thought it needed. And it brings a lot more value to the piece. It even adds a little bit more weight to it, I believe. So it just, it feels like a, a better value than what we were planning on before. Yeah, it's cold to the touch. It's, I mean, it looks right. Um, it's a good looking piece. And um, we already took a, a couple passes at the the finish on it. So we're trying to get that dialed in right now. So yeah, we'll, we'll spend a, a beat or two more on that before it's there. But again, the goal is, you know, we only get to do these things once. So yep. do them right and move on and make sure everybody's happy. So that's a good update. Um, okay. There's tons of other stuff going on. If you guys want to take a look at our product page um, over at paragonfxroup.com, you'll see a new edition that we'll be talking about soon. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun. We've got some new products coming and a new relationship. So lots of cool things happening there. Um, what else? What else we got? Amy, dump it in your lap. Oh, well, uh, we did get our, our deco sample in for the super stand. So uh, we did post a video of that guy yesterday. And uh, it, it's Peter, yeah, yeah. In super stand. Yeah. It is super. It is super. It is so super. Well, I've got a lot of stuff that I, I'm actually waiting for that because I do want one to actually, I want to use it. I want, I have some pieces that I want to put on this thing. And I keep thinking like, oh, I need to find some, because I, I have these items like just randomly laying about. I'm like, I need to display these somehow. And there's I'm only one way to display it. I'm about to go buy something to do it. And I'm thinking, what am I? No, I'm going to wait for the super stand because I know that's coming. So that's the only thing that can get it done is the super stand. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it, we you know we should put an S on that box. Um, so so in so everybody who's watching, everybody who knows. So we just kind of started goofing on the super stand. It, it was just something we called it in house. You know, just a term of endearment. 
Yeah, you, you know, we, we didn't really know what else to call it because it, the idea was it was going to be this universal stand that you could stick all manner of things on. And uh, Super Stand stuck. So there it is. Uh, anyway, we just mentioned it in a video day before yesterday, right? Oh, yeah, day before yesterday. Thank you. As we pretend we film these on Friday, uh, but they come out on Friday, so we have to always do a day back. <laughs> Um, so we're all, we're always a day, a day ahead on these guys because Amy has the foulest mouth that sometimes after we've done these videos, we can't edit out the expletives and her use of profanity enough. So sometimes we have to refilm these because she has probably Tourette's. So <laughs> anyway. So speaking of, can we cut out that song that I threw at the beginning? That's just, mm -mm. I wish <laughs> See, that's a problem with Sean. He doesn't know how to just put the where he can put something over your face and just and just leap <laughs> out. He doesn't know how to do that. So oh, I don't know. pixelated. Yeah. And then replace it with like a monkey scream or something. Okay. Yes. That's exactly what I want. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes. He, he needs to learn how to do that. Anytime I curse, we need to have the goat scream come through. <laughs> 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 That'd be great. Um, I don't know. I think I let something fly a minute ago myself. But anyway, the super fan. So, yeah, we don't talk about that. Um, we haven't talked about that enough. That's been one of those pieces that also um, has gone through a few different factories to get to what we we need. It's it, in fact, it's it's traveled. It's it's traveled the globe to get to. Well, not too far, but it's it's made its rounds to to get to where it needs to be. Um, uh, the, the best thing about the super stand, the idea always was for that. We didn't want to do just some acrylic stand with stanchions on it. And then you go and try to stick your $1,500 prop or whatever on there. And you got to worry about it tipping forward, backwards. You know, we found just the right center of balance on it. And then the standoffs that we include, you got your longs and your middles and your shorts and, and, uh, to decorate things out how, how you want to. I've yet to find anything I can't get on there as long as front to back, it's the same width. And I, and I actually took the, the way I settled on a size for that thing is I took the longest sci-fi weapon I could find, which was a, a Logan's Run flame gun, because it's really long. And I'm like, if it holds the flame gun, it certainly holds the solo blaster. And if it holds a solo, and so on. So you find that it will hold your favorite props. And it, and it does so in a very, um, kind of a, a, a very clean industrial sort of, sort of way. And those stands, what was it, Amy? It's like five pounds. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you said it was five and a half pounds in the yeah. box. It's a big old chunk of steel. And we played with, we played with aluminum. We played with all sorts of metals. And then finally we just, steel was just so satisfying and, and so appropriate for a high end piece. And um, we're working on the final pricing on those stands right now. Um, and you'll be excited. We heard back from them already. So, oh, good, good. Oh, my, our email that went out. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Then, uh, we'll tell you guys what those are going to cost in the next day or two once I find out. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's a, uh, uh the, the, it'll it'll stay under a hundred bucks. It's it's going to stay under a hundred bucks. Simple as that. Um, but uh, it is it is a sturdy. It's a, sub, a substantial piece. Again, undoubtedly seeing pictures of it right now. What's so funny is when I say that we had this thing last week where Sean was getting ready to take off out of town. And I think he was just ignoring these videos. Uh, Sean's our guy who's doing the recording for this and backstage and takes care of all this right now. Uh, and then I was like, I was like, and we, we were talking about this and I was calling out that, and this is going to show up. And I go and I watch the video that you guys haven't seen yet because it was all assed up and, <laughs> and nothing I called out was showing up. So it just made me look stupid. Like, yeah, this and that's good. Yeah, yeah. And nothing was happening. And I was like, dude, dude. So <laughs> anyway, hopefully all this is, is, is there. So that's a good catch up though. Um, yeah. The stands are cool. Um, uh, really like those. And, uh, Mr. DNA is still my favorite, current piece uh the broken joy emanator we talked about that a little bit in in the last video uh that's all done we've settled on our our final sample on that uh we changed the stand a little bit so it's reminiscent of the billboard you see k looking at you know with joy uh no joy's not in it but you know, you know the the theme of the billboard is I don't, is there we i don't think well, we talked we, about that last time did we 
the the we stand. We briefly talked about it, but I don't think we showed. Was that it. in the video? We, was that in the video that we haven't shown yet? Because Tom screwed it up. <laughs> was that, was that, that video where Tom just came on here and showed his ass. Is that that one? I don't <laughs> remember. All right. Just just so everybody knows, so Tom, who you hear me complain about regularly and often and affectionately, uh, he actually did one of these videos with us. Now, of course, when he came on, he talked for almost an hour. The video ran like 55 minutes because he just wouldn't shut up. And and he he was going off about all things about the industry, all of which are true. Um, and we, we just haven't shown the video yet because, well, we don't want to. We don't want to depress everybody, but no, it's, it's, it's not that bad. We just, we have one video out there. Where we're really talking about the industry, the trials and tribulations of starting a prop company and why anybody in their right mind would want to do it and why we do it when we could be doing so many other things. <laughs> so uh, that, that was pretty much the vibe of the whole video. Uh, but we just, we just haven't put it up yet because we were busy with product updates. This, this whole Halloween thing, and all the specials we've been running was really, eating, you know, it was really eating up a lot of time. And then if I'm being completely honest, you guys will know it when you see the video. It's kind of heavy. You know, most of the time we're just idiots on here, just just talking about stuff we wouldn't, how we would normally behave with each other. Um, but we foolishly share it with you guys sometimes. <laughs> so uh, we'll get that video up because a lot of people do enjoy hearing about how and why, you know, we do what we do. I hope we never do. Because, you don't want to see it now? I thought you no, loved it. No, because I, I love the idea of Tom being like Robin Masters from Dagon PI or Charlie from Charlie's Angels. Like <laughs> you never see him. You never see him. Well, we, should, we, should stop. we just don't put his face up. We'll, we'll figure out how to block him up. You just hear his voice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You yeah, that, would. <laughs> that would be that's acceptable, right? We could do that. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why I'm asking you for permission. That's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> why am I asking you? Yes. Uh, but but uh, we should do that. I, I like that too, because um, the, the the boogeyman doesn't always need a face. And he is most certainly that. Can we get him one of those squid mask faces or a squid games mask, you know? We should. So he's just behind a mask. Guys. He has masks and helmets galore in his. He probably, suit, has, he probably owns props oh, from the show. And every time he's on, he wears a new mask. Yes. Let's do that. Tom here. He's got a voice modulator. That is so great. Oh, like like all, what's so funny is I'm thinking forward after he watches this, the phone call I'm going to get. It's going to be great. <laughs> and he's I'm probably going to love it too. What are you talking about? I'm not going to wear a mask. What are you. <laughs> He'll say it just like that, all smug and shit. He'll be like, "I don't know what you're thinking." I'm like, Why would I do that? Why would I do that? I'm not your, I'm not your parent. I don't perform for you. He'll say something <laughs> smug like that. I'm like, yes, you do. Get up on that desk and dance for me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> hey, it's almost Halloween. What are your favorite? Yeah, let's talk about that. I think we've talked about enough business. Let's 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 talk about the the things we're best at. Nonsense. <laughs> let's let's talk about that. Um, yeah, Halloween. So um, everybody's uh, where we want to go. Let's um, everybody's ha favorite Halloween movie. Let's do that. I so I like Jared, discovering yeah. new new horror films around this time. Okay. Uh, I, I you know I go back to my favorites, but I I also like finding new horror films. Okay. And they they get a lot of attention this time of year. Everybody's talking about them. Mm -hmm. And one, one I saw, and you know this people may may think this was dumb, but I, I thought it was really cool. Uh, the film Long Legs. With Nicolas Cage, okay. Uh, it's it's by the director. His name is Oz Perkins. He's actually the son of uh, Anthony Perkins from Psycho, and he's he's directed a, a two or three pretty slow burn horror movies in the past few years. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was uh, I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House, a, a very creepy, very subdued ghost, you know, haunted house movie. Uh, the second one was The Black Coat's Daughter. Uh, again, a very cool. Iso it, it's like isolation and hauntings and and devil worship. It's very cool. But this third, this this one that came out, Long Legs, I really liked it because it was it felt like a very very smart throwback to it had like an X Files vibe to it, like early '90s X Files. Because the movie takes place in the mid '90s, and it centers around this FBI agent looking for this serial killer. And man, it felt like X Files. It felt like this this cool show I used to watch called Millennium. 
which was a, a Chris Carter. He also did EX Files. He did Millennium a few years later with the awesome Lance Henriksen in the lead role as an FBI profiler. And that's kind of where Long Legs feels mm -hmm. like it shares, it shares a little bit of a pedigree from that. But yeah, a really creepy, low-key horror film that I thought was really effective. Um, anyway, check it out. I thought it was really fun. Some cool devil worship, creepy stuff in it. Uh, Nicholas Cage being extra creepy. He's got this. I don't know why they decided to put him in makeup. Imagine that Nicholas Cage, extra right? Creepy. No, but they, they thought I, I, they must have thought like, let's put him in makeup to make him extra creepier. And it's not like he's in. Ooh. It's not like he's got like a burn makeup or anything really, uh, you know, exceptional. They just made him look different, like a different, like an alternate reality version of Nicholas Cage, <laughs> and it's so off-putting seeing him in that makeup like oh god who is ugh. super effective yeah check it out i like it a lot all right keep talking because i'm googling my movies oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sing me a song well here i'll i'll, I'll go since yeah. since you need a second yeah, uh, just, uh, I, I hear you i'm just doing my thing all right <laughs> I'm totally going to watch Long Legs because the, the images that I just found online for it look really intense and creepy. Yeah. And I love that. Something else I thought was funny about the movie. It, it seems like in every scene, there's a red light. Like, I don't know, the, the, the lighting, the director of photography just thought, I want a red light in every almost every scene. So there's a lot of red light in that movie. It's very interesting. That's awesome. You are right, though. Nicolas Cage looks... Super Strange. creepy. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I'm definitely going to have to add that to the list. So what you got, Amy? Every year. Favorite I can't or help discovery? It. Uh, this is a favorite. This is a, right. a classic thing that I watch every single year, and I can't help it. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's just one of, it's one of those ones that I saw as a kid around Halloween, and... Yeah. It's just one of those staples that I kind of need in my life in October. And uh, I know a lot of people consider that a Christmas movie, but it, I, I don't. Kind of but, both. I mean, it, it, yeah. it really straddles that line of the, the first 20 minutes feel very Halloween-like, and then it's kind of a Christmas movie after that. <laughs> but uh, I also, I'm really excited to watch five uh five nights at freddy's because i have yet to watch that and we kind of decided that that needed to be on our list for this weekend so i'm i'm pretty pumped and we might have to watch long legs too because that sounds really cool yeah I, I i mean i love you know, all of that kind of stuff but you know we were talking about five nights at freddy's before we jumped online here um uh, and we were talking about the next one. We we had the opportunity, just if anybody's still watching, hey mom, um, to uh, to do some stuff for Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, we we were really trying hard to find what kind of replicas we could make from it, and there just really was we we were really into it. And we've got a wonderful relationship with the people who manage that property, and um, we just couldn't get there. We just couldn't find anything we could make. So if you guys have any ideas. And you've seen anything um, or if anything catches your eye from, you know, upcoming trailers and that sort of thing from the next movie. Be sure and hit us in the comments. Email us. Call us. Let us know what you might like to see. I'm not opposed to trying to do something from it, provided somebody hasn't already jumped on it. It's not like we just instantly get to claim it or anything. But if uh, nobody's jumped on some ideas yet, there's room to make a few replicas. We sure would be down. Um, I, I like what they did there. It's a uh, it's been a while since we've had a fresh new franchise like that. You know, we were talking not too long ago about, and I think that might've been in that one video that we didn't show yet. We were talking about, um, you know, Pumpkinhead stalled, right? I mean, it started so great with the first film. Oh, I love the first one. I'm yeah. So I mean, excited. such a great film. Pumpkinhead so awesome. And then two fell flat and then really nothing. I, did they do something after that? Wasn't Pumpkinhead 2, wasn't that Blood Wings? They named it something just really ridiculous. And I think so, yeah. Like he, he's more demon winged-like, maybe, if I recall. I I think I watched it, but wasn't really paying attention. The first one I loved, it's got, again, Lance Henriksen. Call out to him. Cool. Doesn't dude. he just sell it? I mean, he, he completely sells it. 
I mean, oh, that Ed Holly, he's so dude, good. It's so it's so great. Um, you guys see that swamp witch, and it's got that 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 cool setting that she's in. Ah, uh, perfect got a great atmosphere to it. A great like yeah, makes, gothic atmosphere. And even when they get into the pumpkin patch, you know, it's more like he got he's got to climb this, this yeah. hill. And, yeah. Oh, it's so great! It's so great and awesome uh, creature design. I love that creature design. Uh, that's Stan, in my, Stan Winston directed that, and then he had uh, I think Alec Gillis and Tom Woodruff. Yeah, do, do a lot of the creature design, and and uh, I think it was it was Tom or Alec. I can't remember which one. Maybe Tom. He he actually plays Pumpkinhead. He's the performer. I forgot which which guy though. Somebody please correct me in the comments. Yeah, that's actually on my list of favorite Halloween movies. The, the, I was getting ready to take my turn here, but that's not what I had to stop and Google. So I've got a friend that I've known for years. Um, I'm sure he doesn't watch this, but Estel, if you're watching it, talking about you, bro. Um, I know he doesn't watch this, but uh, he's the guy that I was talking about yesterday, Amy, Jared, and um, might be able to help us on a project. Anyway, he and I used to do this thing. We'd get on the phone and we don't really get to talk as often as we'd like, but when we do, we have these marathon catch-ups and he's very good at, he's been very good at turning me on to movies. I never would have sought out that I, I never would have thought to, to see. And, and, you know, all too often you'll see a movie title that if the title sucks, it, you know, it sends you down the wrong path. And there was this thing going on, especially a few years back where, like, uh, I think it was on Netflix. It might have been a prime movie, but it was Some Guy Who Kills People. That was the name of the, the movie. Now, who wants to see a movie, Some Guy Who Kills People, right? Um, uh, but it's a good movie. You should really, everybody should go and see that. Thank me later. Tell us about it in the comments. Some Guy Who Kills People is wonderful. It's just a shitty title. And, and I don't know if, if Hollywood was just on this. I'm, I'm trying to be reverent you know or just just i don't know what that was about let's let's just name our movies the worst things we can but like uh it, i think i heard about this it's a it's a great movie and and now this has nothing to do with my friend having recommended stuff but i am going to throw out a few recommendations just just for in case you've missed it so night teeth on netflix uh go watch Nineteenth, it's it's an awesome vampire movie. Uh, another That's one cool. is, um, I think, uh, what? Now? What was that? Night Teeth. I, I'm I'm going to Google myself out real fast because I watched it late and alcohol may have been involved. Hang on. <laughs> yes, it's Night Teeth, and it's on Netflix. It's very good. It is very good. And then um, the other one is uh, Day Shift. Two oh, good yeah. vampires. And you want Day Shift because um, that one's really good. It, um, I mean, it's got Snoop Dogg in it, too, so it's got to be good. Anyway. Uh, National yeah. treasure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, that's, that's a good film. But those aren't what I'm talking about. Here's, here's the ones you probably haven't heard of. So, uh, again, uh, me and Estelle, we'd go back and forth. I would give him titles of things I had seen he'd hit me with stuff and he, he usually gave the better picks. You know, I feel like a lot of mine fell flat, but so he, he had suggested Satan's little helper. Have you guys seen, have any of you seen Satan's little helper? No, you have to see it. It's, it is the perfect Halloween movie. Another one. Now this one's a little rough is um, antiviral. And that's uh, by with Cronenberg's son directed that one. Oh yeah. And, uh, if you know that's the one where basically it's 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 the very near future, but where celebrity worship has gotten to such an extent, like if your favorite singer catches a cold, you can have a strain of their cold. Yeah, or so if, if, if your favorite movie star gets a communicable disease and you want it too, you can be injected with it and have a piece of your favorite celebrity live within you. Yeah, and I don't want to give I don't want to give it too much away. But uh, it's that's a creepy. I mean, that and, and it's filmed in this just weird light that you just it's like it's sucking the life out of you. It's 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 so good. And then another one. And this one's a little tough too. definitely not a family film is contracted. 
And I don't even know how to describe that one. It, I mean, it starts. Is that, the one with the, is that the one with the girl who's slowly rotting away? Yes. Yeah. She has. She has a one night stand. Yes. With a guy who spent a moment in a morgue at the yeah. beginning of the film. That one is. Ugh. There's that's some creepy, right? Stuff in that. Yeah. Are we talking about the millworms? Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, I'm just going to say, you know, there's your buzzword, guys. If you want to see that one, millworms, uh, <laughs> password, millworms. It's an unforgettable, unforgettable scene. Yeah. Um, that one's pretty good. So Satan's Little Helper, that one's fun. That's some good shit. If you pull it up and your wife sits down next to you, she's not going to look at you like something's wrong with you. Now, <laughs> if, 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 if you pull up contracted, yeah, that needs a buffer. You're going to have to explain yourself. Why are you watching that? You're going to have to watch this. Yeah, you're going to have to press pause and get yourself out of that one. But um, antiviral, that one's just that one's just creepy. So check those out. And then if you want to go down a completely weird road over on Shutter, what is that one we were talking about where essentially it's the dead kid sitting at the table with milk and cookies in front of him? Um, is that terrified or terif- what is, um, I think it's terrified. It's an, I want to say it's an argument. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's terrified. It's subtitled. Um, I know it's, it's, here's it's, the first review that popped up nail biting dangerous and scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, it's a, a lot of people would describe it as weird. Uh, again, a foreign film, but a lot of those are the best horror films out there, guys. So if you want to watch Terrified, it's got a particularly unsettling moment in it. I mean, if you Google it, you're going to see the image. There's a little kid set at the table and like in front of a bowl of cereal or cookies and milk. And there, the mom has claimed he, he moved. And, but the, the police are looking at it and they're like, but there's, remember there's footsteps that are all over the house. Yeah. Uh, so it's yes. Like there's been walking around, but they're looking at it like, Somebody put this corpse here. What's going on? Yeah, somebody vandalized the house because there's yeah. footprints on the walls and shit. Uh, yeah, that one's that one is rough. That one's really unsettling. Uh, yeah. So the out of, out of the only thing I mentioned that won't scar you is Satan's little helper. The other stuff um, could could leave you with something. Some time on the therapist couch, but um, <laughs> you don't if you don't oh. add to those things. Well, another well, one. Watch, what's up? Another one on Shutter. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, when evil lurks. That's the one you keep telling me to watch. Yes. Yeah. It's another. I think it's also an Argentinian film. I might Is that the one where the, the the thumbnails the 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 girls got That's, the axe in her face? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean to watch that. Very good, and that particular scene is disturbing. But yeah, it's it's another. It it feels like the it might even be the same people involved. I don't know that did uh, that other one terrified. Mm-hmm. It, it it's got a very similar vibe to it, and, and the idea is that evil is a, is a um, it's like a virus that can be contracted, and where when whenever there's a patient zero, you need to mm-hmm. you need to deal with them, and you need you need to get them isolated and quarantined, and if you don't, if or if you don't dispose of them the right way, evil spreads like a virus. Okay. Good one, super creepy. All right, and you are um, correct. Same director. For both. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you um, go. Make it, make it a double feature. Terrified and um, when evil lurks. Yeah, because the difference in the movies, like, you know, there's that whole genre of horror where it's 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 funny, haha, playful, Freddy cracking jokes kind of horror, and then yeah. you get into the stuff that's really cerebral and just just gets in you psychologically, right. just creepy. Yeah. I love and, both types. Both types are super fun. Satan's little helper is a lot of fun. I'll just give you a taste of it. Essentially there's this little kid and he's, he's playing his little uh, grand theft auto S game. And I think the game is called Satan's little helper, but essentially he's getting points for running over old ladies in the street. You know, he's, you run over children, you know, here's a guy with a shopping cart. Oh yeah. yeah I hit him. You know uh, he's playing this little game, Satan's little helper. I believe that's how that part starts, but it's Halloween and he and his mother are going to pick up his sister. And uh, I, I think they're on an island or something. So, you know, there's a ferry. I'm, I might just be making all this part up, but I know they go and they pick up his sister and the sister has her new boyfriend with her. 
So the little brother is so excited that he's he's getting his big sister for the weekend and, and Halloween, but she's toting her boyfriend, her new boyfriend, and he doesn't like that. Um, so, you know, he's a little pissy about that. They get back to the house. You know, he's he's been a little standoffish. And essentially the kid, I'm, I'm cutting some things out, goes for a walk and he sees this guy in just this grotesque kind of comical Satan mask. And the guy is killing somebody and he's pulling the body out on the porch and the kid's like, oh, what a great Halloween display, you know, great, great Halloween display. That's so cool. It looks so real. And, and, and he goes, do you want some help? And the guy, you just see the guy, the mask kind of nod. And the, the kid ends up helping this killer. <laughs> and um, he thinks everything he's doing is a game. And anyway, I'll leave it at that. Cool. But Satan's uh, yeah. little help. A lot of fun. It definitely got some creep to it. It gets dark. And then, of course, like I said, the other one was antiviral. Look for Cronenberg. The other was contracted. That one's the that one's bad. That one's that one's rough and creepy. And you'll tell your friends. And um, yeah, so, yeah, we'll leave it the, the body horror subgenre of horror films. Where yeah, but if you've got a friend who you're trying to top his recommendations for films, mention those. You'll win. Yeah. Those are great. <laughs> and then, and, and then uh, the 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 more PG thirteen stuff, the the things that I really like, of course, Pumpkinhead. Like we said, I really enjoy going back to Pumpkinhead. Yeah. Um, yeah. I told you guys a story that with that when we had Hurricane Hugo like decades ago in Charleston, the power had just come back on, and the only thing I really had to watch, cable was still out, was was Pumpkinhead had just come out on video. And since the video store was literally destroyed by the hurricane, I, I inherited that pumpkin head VHS tape. Anyway, I just watched it over and over again. It was just before Halloween. It was so creepy. The timing was perfect. Um, just, you know, pretty much everything around us was decimated. And all I had was pumpkin head and a hibachi. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so let's see. Pumpkin head, uh, Fright Night, of course. I talk about Fright Night a lot. Uh, uh, another good staple. Um, we've gone an entire 37 minutes without mentioning w William Cat, which is criminal. Yes. Um, uh, is, is William Cat in any horror movies? Oh, of course. He's in oh, Jared's yeah. favorite. Oh, House. House. Oh. I forget House. You gotta yeah, watch it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was, and I was going to drop House. So that's, that's another favorite. So good. Regular. I'm, have I'm to obviously going to have to watch that. House 2. Cause. House two is just as much fun. Doesn't have William Cat, but it is still a, it's still a good time. And 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 I've talked about it before. I still like to visit 1972's Stan Winston Gargoyles. Oh yeah, yeah. Made for TV Gargoyles. Yep. So creepy. Got Bernie Casey, aka UN Jefferson from Revenge of the Nerds. That's all you need to know. Um, he's a head gargoyle. Uh, when I was a kid. Um, my uncle would torture me with that. Um, this, this house my grandparents had that I would sometimes stay at. And my uncle was still there after I'd seen gargoyles. I was so scared shitless. Um, th they had, th again, this is back in the day in the seventies when people had radio antennas or television antennas. And this thing must've been 30 feet tall. And, and if the wind barely moved, it would just tonk, 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 rattle up against the house. And my uncle would kind of yell across the room and be like, right, you hear that? It's just, Gargoyles, you know, oh. crawling around on the roof. Oh. And I had such a vivid imagination. I was, I was, I was so easily influenced by those, those things. And uh, it, it traumatized me. It scared shit out of me. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, I still, you know, I, I like to revisit that childhood trauma <laughs> and uh, uh, night stalker. I've got, I, I just bought, I've got season one and two. I've, I think there were, two seasons that made it out of Night Stalker. Oh, Am I right? right? The Kolchak? Kolchak? Yeah. Yeah. Kolchak. Um, those are so good. Yeah, uh, still still wonderfully creepy. I, 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 that was back when a season really had like 30 freaking episodes. Yeah. 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 So I can't remember if they actually did a second season, but it was awesome. That was Gavin, um, what's his name, from uh, Christmas Story. Yeah, the dad. Uh, yeah. I forgot, his, I forgot the actor's name, but yeah, he's great. Gavin? So why are we forgetting that? Quick, know. somebody Google that. We can't let that stand. That's Come almost on. disrespectful not to. Why am I brain farting on him? Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Really? You're in McGavin. There it is. That's what I was after. There we go. Respect. Pour one out. <laughs> one for my homies. Uh, 
All right. So we've invoked William Cat, who's awesome. And if he's watching this, we got you, bro. Yep. Again, I recommend Big Wednesday to everyone. And must House. Be watch House. Must be watched weekly. And of course, you guys might know him from Greatest American Hero. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else was he in? Oh, man. It, it doesn't matter, does it? Because if he was in it, it was awesome. It was awesome. He was in it. It was awesome. And then another thing I like to do is um, get in the corner on a ball and and, and cry. <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, you know, rub the lipstick all over my face again. But uh, no, uh, yeah, I feel dirty. <laughs> I'm so, no, we'll have to edit that. <laughs> I almost said some bad shit. So uh, the other thing I like to take is um, remember uh, Tales from the Crypt on HBO. Oh, Tales from oh, Crypt. Yes. So I've yes. got I've got all the DVDs. So I go through a little thing where I just cue those up and watch those. Fun. Those I are so that, awesome. Man. That opening sequence, the the Danny Elfman music, and that whole miniature work that they did was so awesome. Love that. Dude, you just dropped knowledge on me. I feel like I should know that. I didn't know that was uh, Danny Elfman. At, oh, at the yeah. front. Yep. I mean, it makes perfect sense, of course. I mean, yep. but but I actually, I won't front. I didn't know that. But I like pulling those up. And I still like, um, what was the old TV series, uh, Monsters? I still watch those when they come yeah, on. Yeah, that was a good one, too. Yep. So, anyway, uh, we're at 41 minutes. We should probably jump out of here. Um, I could go on, but we should probably mercifully end it for everybody. Else. <laughs> and but, yeah, let's, let's, and let's put everybody out of their misery. So, um, yeah, well, um, looking at the date. Well, if you guys uh, you end up watching any of our suggestions, let us know how you liked them or how creeped out yes. you were. Yeah. We should probably go and say happy Halloween too. Yeah, happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Cause our next video will be November 1st. And Amy, you want to remind everybody of that special one more time on the way out, just to be redundant because Absolutely. we're slashing prices. We're crazy. Halloween super special. Uh, 10% off site-wide free shipping site-wide paragon effects group.com. You have no excuse not to add cool things to your collection. Your collection suffers. Your reputation suffers. If you don't add these things to it now, do that. We need you to record a little on the drums so that we can add that in whenever we need it. Maybe. <laughs> he will play right. for us. So, you know, I'm trying to get something. Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll see. Anyway, happy Halloween guys. Let's go. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. See ya.